Hey, let's take a look at something else. Something else that you should be building. This is a great thing with walking around with sticky pants. All these Velcro strips stick to my pants. <laughs> something else that you can make. Um, oh man, I burned my finger good today. You know what happens when you actually burn nylon rope over a stove and you're actually creating something? You burn the ends to keep them from fraying. You never flick the nylon rope because then a giant glob of molten nylon will fall on your finger and sizzle you like a, a pig over an open hot fire. Uh, <laughs> um, snoots. Now, I showed you um, my uh, strobe lensing unit, which looks like something out of Harry Potter in the prior video where you can actually project a perfect circle of light. So what about a snoot? Oh, I'm going to spend ten dollars and buy one off of eBay. Well, why don't you go down to the hobby store and spend two dollars on some cardboard... I got these for free. Um, go down to the hobby store and spend two dollars on some cardboard tubing. You'll need uh, a small one like this and then a large one like this. Now, actually, how you pad it, you, stick, you can use a, a rag or some foam to actually line the difference between these two. And it'll fit over your speed light, of course. Turn it on, and you'll use this uh, for uh, very low-key uh, 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 light modeling. Um, the same thing as like a straw snoot. And at one porter power here. Manual. Now, as I told you before, this does not project out a perfect circle of light. You know, you can't see this. It'll project out an oblong, fuzzy circle, whereas this will project out a perfect, well-defined circle of uh, speed light illumination, which, of course, has its own unique uses. Um, Two dollars you can make this. Uh, very simple. Uh, one of the most uh, useful things for this is uh, you uh, layer uh, your tertiary light behind your model. What do I mean by tertiary? Primary light, you're going to uh, uh, expose for your model or whatever sort of scenery you're going to be doing. And then you're going to have your subject, whether there's a model or a group of people. You're going to have the fill light for them. That's your secondary layer of light. And your tertiary will be some hair light. Like if I'm going to do a, a, a model shoot here, um, i got some primary illumination off camera. But I also want some uh, hair light. Now, how do I know to point this? I'm be, me being a lazy person. Let me actually strap this in with Velcro. All you have is two cardboard tubes. You have a piece of Velcro strip here and on the top of your speed light. That is why every professional photographer, anytime you see their speed lights, you'll actually wonder, why do they have so much Velcro on their speed lights? And that's the reason why. I'm going to put this on a light stand using a little adapter. Which, by the way, if you do not have these cold shoe adapters, you can buy five of them for $10. The most useful tool in the world, if you don't actually have about five of these or so, then you're making a mistake. They're only like two bucks a piece. Do not buy them from B&H Photo. They're all made in China. They're nothing other than a cold shoe adapter with quarter inch here and a cold shoe here. So you can mount any speed light on any light stand or tripod. This is one of the most useful tools in the world. They're only two bucks and you should have a little handful of them. So I'm able to stick this on a light stand. Behind the model and illuminate her hair to give her an angelic glow. And people love that, especially women. They love the hell out of that. They love it. Now, me being lazy, the question then becomes, well, how do you know it's pointed at exactly the right spot? Obviously, the model is going to move around and fidget. But I mean, if you can hit the right spot, the easy way to do this, and I use this uh, for uh, time exposures, for painting with light, especially outdoors, is I'll actually stick a surefire light in. Let me turn it on first, of course. Stick a surefire light in once I have my light mounted on my light stand. And then I can point this and I know I've got it hit at the right spot. And I'll take my surefire out. And now that I know I've got it pointed in the exact, exact correct spot. I typically will mount this on a cold shoe. One of these uh, $2 cold shoe adapters on one of my spare tripods. So I'm actually able to very quickly and easily adjust it for hair illumination. And that's the trick to that. Try that. Um, this is one of the most useful tools in the world for uh, giving uh, rim light or hair, hair illumination to model shoots, uh, to babies, give some background definition. It actually gives you perceptual depth in the portraiture that people love. It makes people look angelic, especially when they're, if a woman has some nice fluffy hair, that you're actually giving her some edge definition. You're actually able to see a little bit of illumination curving around the back of her head. You know, why would you buy one of these for $11 from, you know, cheap plastic junk off of it? You can build one for a buck or two. You know, I've got, I've probably got a dozen of these things. I don't know where the other five are. I mean, I know where five or six of these are, but, 
you know, when you're sitting there scratching your ass like a monkey in front of the television set. <laughs> yeah, someone's going, he's crazy. Why not build one of these? It'll take you five minutes. What is in here? Uh, two cardboard tubes and uh, some duct tape to hold it all together. A duct tape? It's just two cardboard tubes. You slap it on here. You put a Velcro strip here. You've already got Velcro on your speed light. You mount this on your tripod or your light stand. And remember, you should always have a handful of these suckers. This is a quarter inch. You can go on eBay. A quarter inch to cold shoe adapter. Every professional photographer in the world has a handful, if not more, because you, you end up losing these at some point. A handful or a pocket full, or usually a bag full, of these things. They're so useful. And uh, you should build one of these. You should. Now, how is this any better than a straw, um, a straw light mod, where you're actually able to bring out the entire uh, bit of a speed light illumination, which, let me show you over here. I've shown you in a prior video how to build these. And uh, the people have actually built this off my recommendation. You can actually buy these off of eBay, but you just use some black straws. You smell this in the front of your speed light, it gives you a very confined uh, corridor of light. Well, instead of a corridor of light, you've got a bullet of light. I mean, that's basically the definition of what you have. How useful is that? Think of how useful it is. It is incredibly useful. Um, you can actually uh, drop this down, stick it on a miniature tripod, and just illuminate a sliver of someone's face. You expose for the background, and you'll just illuminate a sliver of someone's face. I mean, less is more. Um, it's the same thing in uh, tattoo work. I mean, I've got a twenty-four thousand uh, uh, dollar bodysuit here of tattoo work, and uh, I uh, used to be a tattoo artist for a brief period. I mean, I have uh, really good drawing skills, or at least moderately good. And the one thing that a lot of tattoo artists never figure out is negative space. Sometimes less is more. It's like, well, I got to color everything. No, how about negative space? You know, the skin is negative space. It's the same thing in photography. I had a contest about six months ago, and a guy won it where actually 95% of the photograph was supposed to be black. You're supposed to define the photographic composition through about 5% of illumination. That is one of the many uses, including hair light. You got nice tight confinement of illumination for hair illumination, or illuminating just a sliver of someone's uh, profile. You know, not everything has to be illumined, uh, illuminated. Um, another photographer recently said, and I thought it was a really, really intelligent statement, I basically said the same thing in different words, is that the smarter the cameras get, the dumber the photographer gets. And uh, your cameras want to perfectly illuminate everything into evenly illuminated sludge, and that ain't fun no more. I mean, everybody's seen that. you got to think outside of the box. You're always smarter than your camera, no matter how expensive it is. So, anyway, thanks for watching. You need to try that light mod, because it works perfectly. And I'll catch you later. If you like this video, drop me a buck or two. Go tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you the most happy. This is going to be the year of light. Happy 2016 to everybody.